Greetings, and welcome to this episode in the series of videos on LiDAR with ArcGIS Pro. This series is brought to you by AmericaView, in partnership with the College of Natural Resources and Environment at Virginia Tech, the Virginia Cooperative Extension, and GeoTED UAS. I'm Cherie Auckland, and I'll be your guide. The prior three chapters introduced classification codes, interactive classification, and geoprocessing tools for classifying points in a LiDAR point cloud. In this chapter, we'll demonstrate four of the geoprocessing tools, classify ground points, classify by height, reassign classification, and feature proximity, 2D proximity. We'll also use the 3D proximity tool. I'm beginning here with a project created in chapter 19 that has been partially classified. You can begin with a fresh new scene and the San Luis Valley dataset if you like. Let's begin with classifying the ground points. Some are already classified and came that way with the dataset. Zoom in to this location just east of the buildings and vegetation that were interactively classified in Chapter 19, and let's create a profile view. A variety of unassigned points are found in this region, many that actually look like ground points. Let's practice on this limited extent to see how the tool operates. You can leave Profile View open and open the Classify Ground tool. Leave all of the default settings, but check the boxes in front of Reuse Existing Ground, and for Processing Extent, Use Current Display Extent. The coordinates of the area are populated into the tool automatically, and let's run the tool. We see here in Profile View now more brown or ground points, and also in the scene. Comparing the statistics, from the beginning, we can see that significantly more unassigned points have been classified as ground. Let's zoom out and run the tool one more time, but for a greater extent. We'll go ahead and process the entire dataset for ground points. Leave all settings as default. Be sure you reuse existing ground. Change this to default, which will run for the entire set then. And run the tool. Viewing the statistics, we see that after the entire dataset has been processed, there are still a significant number of unassigned points. Now let's use a different tool, Classify by Height, to classify some of the vegetation. Zoom into the region from Chapter 19, where buildings and medium vegetation or trees were identified. But all vegetation in this scene is not yet classified. Now this is going to look a little different from when I started this video because I turned on eye dome lighting to help visualize some of these LiDAR points. Let's create a profile view right across here. So I'm going to go to Classification, Create, and start my profile view here. Using the measure tool, we measured negative 3.16 meters of vertical distance between the identified point here to the ground. And measuring the distance from what appears to be the bottom of a tree canopy, about 7 meters. So let's close this and open the Classify by Height tool. Recall from Chapter 20 that the values in height are the maximum value that will be used to determine the classification. For example, low vegetation, or 3, is ground up to 5 meters. Medium vegetation, 4, is over 5 and up to 25 meters. And high vegetation, 5, is over 25 to 50 meters. Based on our measurements, let's change low vegetation to 4 meters, medium vegetation, to 15 meters, and we'll leave high vegetation at 50. We'll also leave ground source as all ground points, noise classification as none, and the processing extent as default. Now let's run the tool, and this is going to process the entire data set. Now going over to view the statistics again, we see the number of unassigned points is significantly reduced, and vegetation values assigned throughout the entire data set. 
Zooming into the area just east of the lake, we see that some vegetation values, both low and medium, have been assigned to buildings. In Chapter 19 with interactive classification, we only classified a few of these buildings. Those unassigned points were assigned values by the Classify by Height tool. Now let's see how to correct a misclassification. Let's first zoom into the largest of these buildings. The only medium vegetation showing, the lighter green, are the building and roof points. Let's open the Reassign Classification tool. We'll change the current class of 4, medium vegetation, to the new class 6, which is building. And we'll change the processing extent to the current display extent. And then we'll choose Run. Only the points in the extent should have changed, but zooming out, the tool did grab quite a few points outside of the map viewer. So be careful that the extent filling in under Processing Extent only shows those coordinates in the display that you're interested in changing. We can correct some of those points just north of the largest building. We can zoom in here and create a profile view and use interactive processing. So we can see that these are probably trees. If we just change that view, and if we create a profile view here, we can see that these are probably building, and this is probably the tree. And using skills that we already know, we can select, for example, these values right here and make them building. Apply those changes. And maybe I'm going to use a lasso tool to lasso these and make those medium vegetation and apply those changes. Always be sure to go and uh, check your statistics. That's probably a, a building right there, part of the building right there. And so closing this, you could use interactive classification to fix up the rest of these points that we see right here. So we're going to use the Change Last Class Codes tool again, but this time we're going to change the processing extent. So I'm going to zoom closer into these trees right here that we see just to the north of the trees that we just edited. So we know this is a small group of trees. It was classified as medium vegetation before, and our tool erroneously made it a building when we ran it. So let's go ahead and change this back to um, medium vegetation. So this little group of building is going to become medium vegetation. But this time, we're going to make the processing right here extent default, and we're going to change the processing boundary. So we're going to click this tool right here, choose polygons, and now we're going to draw a polygon around this group of points, just clicking each place we want a vertex. And when we're happy with our polygon, double click to close it. So now we see a polygon feature class that has showed up in the contents. This is what's going to be used to limit the extent of the processing. So now let's go ahead and run the tools. Well, I see that this is telling me I'm missing a, a class code. So we're changing from building to medium vegetation. And now run the tool. So notice that some of the ground points were captured in the polygon. The classification code change is from code 6 to code 4, so the ground points won't be reclassified. They'll be ignored. So with what you know so far, continue to practice the tools and correct the classifications for the rest of the buildings and vegetation shown here. Now for one last example, we can use the 2D Feature Proximity tool to change the classifications within a distance of a feature. A feature class is needed to use this tool. We can create this feature class, though, using a different tool. First, we're going to zoom into the trees northeast of these buildings. We'll classify these seven trees as high vegetation, just an example of how the tool works. Now open the feature proximity. So I need to first select my layer and feature proximity and 3D proximity tool. We'll use this tool to create the feature class that we need. So let's begin by clicking this pencil icon and select points. Now let's add a point to each of these trees. Here, since I'm done, I'll select Finish. 
When you're doing this with a polygon, double-clicking the polygon ends the selection. In this case, you have to tell ArcGIS Pro that you're done with your selection. In Contents, you see this new file that was created. This Locate Last Points by Proximity Input 3D Features, Points. Let's open the Attribute table. Here are the seven features representing each of the tree points. And let's go ahead and close this. Now we're going to open the 2D proximity tool. So make sure you've got your last data set selected, classification, feature proximity, 2D proximity. And now the input feature class, your features, are these points that you just created. Use a buffer distance of 2, meaning any LiDAR point within 2 meters of the point feature class will be recoded. And let's change the new class to 5 for high vegetation. Remember, this is just an example. These trees might not qualify as high vegetation. And then click Run. The LiDAR points within 2 meters of the feature points are now coded as high vegetation. The points aren't symmetrical around the feature points because this is a 3D scene, and points are not necessarily an equal distance from each other. There's still a considerable number of points that could be reclassified. So let's run the tool again using the same parameters, except increase the buffer distance to 3 meters. The resulting coverage is much better for many of the trees, but the second one from the left still has several LiDAR points coded as medium vegetation. So we can isolate this one tree by opening the attribute table for the points feature and selecting the feature point, which is the second one, that corresponds to the second tree from the left. Now recall, if features are selected, ArcGIS Pro Tools will run on those selected features instead of the entire class. So now let's change the buffer distance to 4 on the 2D proximity tool here and run the tool again. So the tool applies changes to the selected feature only, the tree selected in the feature class. And let's do one more example using this same tool. Remember the pivot irrigation line? Zoom into that area. The irrigation line that we see here has been coded as a mix of vegetation and ground points. Let's just take a closer look at it. So you can see here we've got a bunch of ground points and then some potential uh, maybe vegetation and maybe that's the irrigation line. So let's do the same process with this with the 3D proximity tool. So we're going to create a feature line for the irrigation line. So I'm going to choose the 3D proximity tool. And in this case, my 3D features I'm creating are going to be, is going to be a line. And I'm going to zoom way in. And so for each of these points, I'm just going to click and create a line. If you click in the wrong place, maybe I clicked over here instead, I can just point to it till I get this diamond-shaped tool and drag that point over to the point where I wanted it to land and then continue on with my selection. While I'm in this view, I can navigate using my middle mouse wheel. Holding down the middle mouse wheel lets me pan. So as I come to the end here, and I hit the last couple of points, I think I'm going to stop right there, I need to click Finish to finish my selection. So now you see we have a new feature class shown up here in the contents. If I open this attribute table, you'll see this one polyline feature that I created uh, just now by clicking through all those points. Now as before, to use this feature class we just created, we're going to select our last data set. We're going to go over here to the 2D proximity tool. I'm going to use that line as input features to the 2D proximity tool. So that's our lines. And we're going to select all the points that are within a half a meter of this line to become our irrigation line. And our new class for this feature is going to be 16, which is one of the wire codes. There's really nothing that exists right now. 
for an irrigation line. And run. So I'm going to have to add these points. You may not have to, but um, they're not in my symbology. That 16 is not in my symbology. So I'm going to have to go over here to symbology. I'm going to add values. It recognized that I have selected 16 as a value. So I'll go ahead and add that. And now we'll be able to see those points that were selected as part of that um, 2D proximity feature class. It looks like I did a pretty good job. I may have missed one or two of these uh, low vegetation. And let's take a look at this in a, in a profile view. So it's evident that not all the points were changed, but some ground points were inadvertently changed like you see here. This is a prime candidate for interactive classification. It can be very useful to fix these small misclassifications. In summary, when classifying LiDAR point clouds, there is no one classification tool that will process all the points at one time, so multiple classification methods must be used. Continue to work on classifications to try to classify as many of the unassigned points as possible to prepare for the next chapter which will demonstrate creation of a digital elevation model, or DEM, from a LiDAR point cloud. When creating a DEM, ground points are used, so in order to be as accurate as possible when creating the model, all ground point classification should be finished. This ends Section 5 of the text, the sequence of chapters on classification. The next chapter begins the last section of the text, demonstrating additional processing operations available to create products from a LiDAR point cloud.